What up boys and girls, in this video, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you a Golang pattern that will legit blow your mind. But before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, because 50% of my viewers are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing, it, you will do me an enormous favor. Leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. And for the people that really wanna level up, I made the full-time GoDev program specifically made for people that willing to become professionally active in the industry. We basically cover the whole shebang, introduction, concurrency, APIs, microservices. Uh, you even have a blockchain from scratch uh, as a my treat to you and how to land a job. Check it out, 30% off. Uh, what's included is all on this website, fulltimegodev.com. See you there. All right, so basically this pattern, like I said, is going to be a legit insane pattern, right? Uh, but before I can actually explain it to you, we first need to see the root cause of the problem. Why do we need this pattern? Why can this pattern be handy, right? So for example, uh, we're gonna have a server here, right? And it's gonna be a structure. And this server is going to get, um, it's going to have some options, right? So for example, we're gonna have a max uh, connection Right, it's gonna be an integer. We can have an ID, for example. It's gonna be a string. Uh, and for example, TLS, right? It's gonna be a bool. Of course, there's going to be multiple uh, configuration uh, variables, right? But this, let's start with three. So what would you do? Uh, you will make, a, for example, uh, a new server here. And you will say that the max connection is going to be an integer, integer, uh, the ID is going to be a string, and the TLS is going to be a Boolean, right? And it's going to return a pointer to the server here. We're gonna return, uh, hands are so cold, not gonna lie. We're gonna return the server here, and we're gonna say uh, maxcom, it's gonna be the maxcom, right? The ID is gonna be the ID, and of course, the TLS is going to be the TLS, right? Uh, you can see the more options you have, the bigger your new server is going to be. Uh, this, this function signature, the more arguments it's going to take. And if you want to construct one, uh, you could say new server, right? And then you're going to say, for example, xcom is one, the ID is foo, and the TLS is going to be um, false. Something like that. Not bad, but the problem is, you can see it if you make a library or something, and your server is going to have multiple or more configuration options. It's going to get very tedious, right? It's going to get very big. So what a lot of people do is this, right? They say, okay, no problem. We make an opts or a config uh, structure, right? And we are going to move these uh, variables inside of this ops pattern, in this ops struct, right? And then we're gonna say, we're gonna embed this ops thingy right here. And instead of basically doing all this bullshit, we are gonna say, instead of multiple arguments, we are gonna take one simple argument, which is the opts structure, right? And then we say the opts is the opts. And to construct that, uh, you need to construct it, you need to provide an opts struct. So we are gonna say it's gonna be an opts, and then uh, we can actually basically leave it blank. And um, you can already see the problem if people don't wanna configure it, or they just wanna set the TLS. You need to have a way to basically, um, check your ops in your new server, right? And you need to make sure that you have this default configuration and all that stuff. But what if you wanna provide a library or a module where users don't specifically need to provide options, but give them the possibility to do it if they want so? Then you need to do some fancy stuff, some witchcraft and some voodoo, unless you use this pattern I'm going to show you. The first thing we are gonna do is we're gonna make a type which is going to be an um, opt func, which is going to be a func that will take in a pointer to opts, right? But then we are also going to make a function and that's going to be called default opts, which is going to be a function that will return this opt, right? It's going to be our default options. If nobody is going to provide our options, we're going to have this default stuff going. So we're going to say return uh, an opts, and we're gonna say, for example, at the maxcom, uh, let's say 10, the ID is going to be uh, default, uh, default like this, yeah. And then the TLS um, is going to be false, for example, right? So the first thing we're gonna do in our new server here is we're gonna say that O from opts is going to be default opts. That's the first thing, right? And then what we're gonna do instead of uh, that the server is not going to take the opts, 
it's going to take this. It's going to take a slice, an elliptic slice of opt funk. Right? It's basically a slice of opt funk. And why do we do these uh, three dots here? I think it's coming to is is called an ellipsis or something. I'm not quite sure. Don't shoot me in the foot here. Uh, the reason why we do this is this gives us the possibility to give no options, one option, or unlimited options. So it's very generic. It's very cool. It's very nice for users that are going to use your library, your module. It's very, yeah, they can do what they want, right? <clears throat> so, um, of course, we're going to say that the options is going to be this O here, which is going to be the default options. But after we set the default options, we are going to range. Uh, we're going to range over uh, the opts here. Like that. And then we are going, it's going to be basically an FN, right? This is this function, is the opt func here, right? It's basically somewhat of the pattern I'm, I teach you uh, the previous video. It's not the same, but we are using the same mechanics, right? It's, it's like I said, this pattern is very, very, very useful, uh, the previous video, and we're going to build upon that. So what we're going to say here is, for each of these options, if there are one, we are going to call this function on the already default options, but we need a pointer, so we're going to take the reference, right? So what does that mean? If nobody provides us uh, options, we have the default options. And if there are some opt functions, we can basically um, modify the options pointer. So how does it work? <clears throat> so for example, uh, you want to have a function. And this function is going to call with TLS. Right? And what this is going to do is going to take this opt here, which is a pointer to opts. And we're just going to say opts.tls equals true. Right? Boom. And then let's print out the server real quick. Let's do a print F here, uh, percentage plus V, so we can see it in depth, S, right? If we don't specify any options and we do a go run dot, we're gonna see that we have a max con of 10, ID is default and the TLS is false. But now we wanna give the user the option to say, okay, I wanna have a server, but with TLS, right? If we run this again, go run dot, then we see if I save this, uh, did I make a mistake here? Uh, no. Go run dot. Now we can see that the TLS is true, right? But maybe we want to have an other configuration func, which can be a uh, func with uh, max con, right? And this is a little bit tricky because now we're going to say here, uh, we want to say with max con n, which is going to be the max connections. Instead of returning, uh, we in, in, instead of returning nothing here, we need to return an opt func, right? Which is basically we're going to say a return func uh, opts pointer to opts. Can I please type? Yeah, I'm going to say this real quick, and then we're going to say here that the opts dot maxcon is going to be this n, right? That we provided. So now if we go back to our server, we can say with TLS, with maxcom 10. Uh, let's do 99 because we already have 10, right? Let's say this a couple times, uh, go run dot. Now we can see that the maxcon is 99 and the TLS is true, but we don't need to provide the TLS. We can say just maxcon, right? And if you run this again, you see maxcon 99 and now the TLS is false. So this is actually, if you check, if you, if you think about it, a very nice pattern for, config, for configuring your structures, uh, specifically um, for libraries, specifically if you want to make something for your team or something and you give your, your colleagues or people uh, in the open source community the option to configure it like their be, uh, believe, belongings or whatever you want to say that, right? Uh, and if you really want, you could say also, um, with ID, for example, func, um, with ID, which is going to take in a string. Uh, it's the same thing. We're going to return this opt func here, right? And we're going to say a return func opts, pointer to opts, like this. And then we're going to say opts dot um, ID is going to be S, right? Actually, to be honest, let's call this ID here is a little bit better. Just like that. So now we're going to say, I want a new server with maxcon, but I also want a new server with ID, custom ID here, and it's going to be bar foo bus. Save this. 
and run this again. And now we have our custom ID, right? And if we don't specify anything, uh, it just works fine. And we have the default options. Hey, isn't that amazing? Let us be honest. Uh, how this pattern is being called, I have no clue. Uh, let's call it the decorated with strict configurating pattern. I don't know. Uh, it's just something uh, that is used. It's basically not known uh, by a lot of people. But it's getting used by, for example, GRPC is using this pattern. Uh, I'm using this pattern in uh, the Hollywood Actor Framework uh, for configurating your actors. And I think, is there something else I can think about? Not quite sure. Uh, like I said, a very powerful pattern, specifically if you want to uh, make the life of people much easier. Well, that's it. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, jump into my Discord community, leave a comment, uh, thumbs up, all that shenanigans. And for the people that are willing to learn all this stuff, check out the full-time godev.com program 30% off and I see you in my live streams or video or in the program or even in the discord right bye bye